Hello, my name is Dwayne O'Neill, and I'm a co-administrator of the Family Tree DNA O'Neill Project. This presentation is on some O'Neill family histories and their DNA connections. And the DNA information is current as of August of 2021. An introduction, uh, distinguished families often have a formal family record. And as an example, um, some of the O'Neill information is contained in uh, John O'Hart's uh, book on Irish pedigrees. But you have to be um, one of the on the formal line uh, to be able to be recorded in a book such as that. However, individual families may have their own private records and uh, being gathered uh, over the years, often by a family historian or even as a handed down in an oral tradition. However, for those of us with an Irish connection, there's often an early 1800s brick wall where the uh, census records uh, don't go back that far and even our marriage and uh, birth certificate records are only into the uh, mid 1800s. So often people turn to uh, DNA for testing to confirm their connections to uh, specific Irish clans and uh, locations in Ireland. As part of that, the uh, Family Tree DNA O'Neill Project has almost a thousand members. And these members have completed uh, one of three or three different types of testing, autosomal somal testing, which uh, is testing that looks at all of one's family lines and, act, and typically goes back to about uh, fourth or fifth cousins. A second type of testing is Y-DNA, which is related to the uh, father's father's line and the paternal line. And then the third type of testing is mitochondria testing, which uh, relates to the female line, so the mother's mother's line. But uh, typically, uh, people are interested in Y-DNA to follow the um, paternal family line. And there's three types of testing, STRs, SNPs, and big Y testing. STR stands for short tandem repeat polymorphisms, and um, they can be up to 111 markers. A second type of test is SNP or single nucleotide polymorphisms. And then a third one is big Y testing that covers um, all of one's SNPs plus the private variants. And so these are variants that aren't uh, shared with other um, uh, kits at, at the present moment. So uh, the HAPL group would describe the terminal SNP that is shared with one or more other kits. And so it's sort of like a, um, a, um, a shorthand form uh, identifier. Within the O'Neill project, there's two main Y DNA groupings, one you now, and the second one, the O'Neill variety. And uh, often they're also called uh, Royal O'Neills, have that in quotation marks, plus several old Irish groups that aren't uh, related to the first two. For um, Y-DNA results, okay, often uh, be able to uh, connect to family histories and many Irish clans and SEPs are now associated with specific SNPs and HAPL groups. So a couple of examples include uh, RM222, which is associated with Nile, the nine hostages, and RZ1513, which is associated with the Royal O'Neills. In this presentation, it's, we'll summarize two specific family histories and how DNA results impact those histories. The first family is of Hugh O'Neill, who was born in Northern Ireland and died in 1886 in Quebec, Canada. And the oral history um, through the family historian had this to say, 
Upon marrying a poor peasant girl named Mary McAlpine, his father disinherited his son, Hugh. Hugh and his wife settled in Montreal. And furthermore, quotation from the family history, Hugh's father was a lord and connected to Shane's castle, Antrim. First step uh, from the uh, oral history is to go to traditional genealogy research. And as part of that, first one was discovery of a Quebec marriage record that lists Hugh O'Neill and his wife, Margaret McAlpine, as parents to the groom, son Henry. Another record was the marriage certificate for Hugh and Margaret from 1837. It's a Roman Catholic record in Dundee Paris, which is parish, which is east of Toome in County Antrim. Another record shows Margaret McAlpine's family likely from just across the river in County Derry from Toome. Further research showed a newspaper notice from 1838 by Daniel O'Neill, and he states, he will not pay any debts, debts of his son, Hugh O'Neill. And further research shows that Captain Daniel O'Neill was born around 1775 and died in 1841 at Breakart, which is near Toome, County Antrim. And he's buried at St. Bridget's Church of Ireland Church in Randallstown. Furthermore, newspaper articles from around 1856 by Charles O'Neill connects Captain Daniel O'Neill of Breakart to Arthur O'Neill of Nelsbrook, who was born about 1630 as the ancestor of the O'Neills of Breakart. Furthermore, Arthur O'Neill is documented as a grandson of Shane McBrien O'Neill, who died 1617 of Eden Duff Carrick Castle, which was renamed Shane's Castle. So, so far, the traditional genealogy research is lining up with the oral history. And from a location point of view, this shows that um, tomb uh, in County Antrim is shown here on this uh, map and Breakart is just outside a tomb. And then not very far away is Shane's Castle, which is outside of Randallstown. Turning now to DNA, the uh, second great grandson of Hugh O'Neill did uh, big Y testing. It turns out that his haplogroup is BY31268. And the SNP pedigree for that haplogroup starts off with a P312, then a few steps down DF13, a few more steps down to Z1513, and then a, um, a subgroup of Z1513 is BY3292, and then a couple more steps down to BY31268. Haplogroup Z1513 is associated with the Royal O'Neills, with the ancestor given the, um, the label Lazy Youth, and uh, this individual died in 1199. Haplogroup group Z1513 has four branches and uh, the first branch FT32273 is associated with the Tyrone and Fuse lines through one of the sons of Lazy Youth. Uh, the, the last haplogroup group BY3292 is associated with the Kleinoboy O'Neill line through a second son of Lazy Youth. So this here shows that um, the oral history lines up with the traditional genealogy research. And then the DNA results also confirms the connection to um, the uh, O'Neills of Clannaboy and uh, Shane's Castle. The second family that we're looking at is another Hugh O'Neill with a slightly different O'Neill spelling, who was born around 1695 and died in 1754 in Virginia. 
And as part of this family history, one of the descendants, John Belton O'Neill, in a letter stated, and I quote, my great grandfather, Hugh O'Neill, was a midshipman in the British Navy when he jumped overboard and swam ashore in Delaware. He was the youngest son of the house of Lord O'Neill of Shane's Castle, Ireland. And this version was also recorded in a book by John Chapman titled The Annals of Newbury, which was written in 1896. And Shane's Castle, uh, originally named Eden Duff Carrick, is associated with the Clannaboy O'Neills. There's a large group of Hugh O'Neill's descendants who live mainly in the U.S. And uh, these descendants, some of these, except John Belton's O'Neill's version, others connect Hugh O'Neill to Brian McPhailan O'Neill of Chains Castle, and others, some deny the whole tradition, and some others see it as a mystery and not, and, um, not sure of what um, is of the uh, history, of the oral history. From a tr traditional genealogy point of view, a Hugh O'Neill is recorded as a son of Brian of Elargy, who was son of Phelan Dub O'Neill of the Clonaboy O'Neills. And Brian of Elargy is recorded as a brother to Arthur O'Neill of Nelsbrook, Randallstown an ancestor of the uh, first family history. Brian of the Largy is the father of French John O'Neill, who changed the name of Edenduff Castle to Chains Shane's Castle. However, Hugh O'Neill was born in 1695, and Brian of the Largy is recorded as dying in 1669. Therefore, our Hugh O'Neill cannot be the son of Brian of Elargy. And other research, there's no other strong connections for Hugh O'Neill to the Clannaboy O'Neills that have been, uh, that was proposed. From, uh, turning over to the DNA results, there is a, a seventh great grandson who has done a uh, big Y testing of Hugh O'Neill born in 1695. And his downstream branch of the Happer group is Y12458. And we'll get back to that in, in the following slide on the details. Looking at um, the connection of this uh, kit to Hugh O'Neill, uh, another tester is likely a fourth cousin of the first tester and has no SDR differences at 111 SDR markers. And he also traces his earliest known paternal ancestor to this Hugh O'Neill. And then a third tester only goes back using traditional genealogy to Robert O'Neill, who was born in 1860. But uh, this individual has done big Y testing and the haplogroup coincides with the first tester. So therefore there's confirmation, but it's not totally conclusive that the first tester is the descendant of Hugh O'Neill. We'd like to encourage other descendants of Hugh O'Neill to take Y-DNA testing so that we can confirm the uh, Y-DNA results of the first tester. Turning to the DNA results for the pedigree for Y12458, it starts off with uh, P312, similar to the uh, first family, but it branches off to Z290, then down through 1121 and DF13, and then several levels down to L159, then a few more branches down to the Y12458. Interesting enough, the L 159 SNP is associated with the O'Neills of Leinster uh, rather than the O'Neills of, um, of Clannaboy. And uh, this group is uh, in the Family Tree DNA O'Neill project is in group 1C. The O'Neills of Leinster 
are not part of the Ulster O'Neills or the uh, Royal O'Neills. And they originate in an area near modern day Clongale in County Carlow. And the uh, documentation from traditional genealogy is that this group of O'Neills are descendants of Neil and a son and a son and a descendant of the fourth king of Ireland who died in 494. So the DNA results in this particular family uh, don't uh, correspond to the oral family history of the connection to the clan of Royal O'Neills and uh, Shane's castle. From a location point of view, uh, the second family, the connection to uh, Clongal County Carl is on the border with uh, Wexford Camp Ford County. And so this is in the um, southeastern corner of Ireland as compared to where Shane's Castle is in Antrim. And so the geographic location is uh, significantly different. So in summary, in connecting family histories to the uh, Y-DNA results, personal family histories are an important information source. And often it's valuable to build upon these stories using traditional genealogy research. Y-DNA testing, especially SNP or Big Y in particular, can be an important indication to support traditional genealogy and family history. I'd like to make a big thanks to all the members of the FT DNA O'Neill project that have gone ahead with Y DNA testing. Thank you.